Okay, great, awesome. All right. Uh, okay, so welcome to the uh, SB Midweek Strategy Webinar. And we're going to start with just some of the bigger kind of macro uh, markets, such as dollar index. Um, we, you know, traded up into the channel area here. Uh, last week, and really since the FBI uh, thing came out about Comey, <clears throat> you know, reopening this um, investigation with Clinton and whatnot, the market's just tanked, gold's tanked. So that's one of the things that I want to, you know, that people ask often about or that I kind of get into conversations with some traders who might be fundamental or whatever, and they're like, well, what about news and, and whatnot? I'm like, it's, yeah, I get it. There's news there. Okay. Just because there's, you know, I don't not pay attention to news, but as far as making decisions based on news, uh, I don't find it all that useful from a timing perspective. Um, the fact that you were trading up into channel resistance told you that the market was in a high risk situation. Okay. So, any sort of response that you might have gotten uh, from that area, right? You're at resistance, so that's a high risk area to be bullish, okay? And sure enough, the market came off pretty hard. Um, now, <clears throat> I still think the dollar can go a little bit lower. Specifically, again, this is a four hour chart, but if you scroll out, you know, this is the uh, December high and Dece last year, December high, and then the high from January this year. So that, you know, trend line is essentially a level that I'm looking at now as providing uh, support, okay? Maybe at some point next week, I mean, it'd be interesting if we tanked into there on the election, I guess, potentially, right? Uh, that's actually where these levels line up. I have those lows drawn under the 10.7 low, which really is kind of the bottom of, I guess, what you would consider the breakout bar. Uh, for the dollar. So uh, that area of 96.50 is kind of where I'm, you know, paying attention. Obviously, the, the channel for the whole thing is lower um, as far as a bounce is concerned or some sort of a, you know, uh, I guess bigger response on the upside. Now, the immediate trade, though, is lower, uh, but maybe not necessarily from right here, right now. This morning, we did pop a little, you know, we were a little higher. I was hoping to get up into 97.57.66. Um, again, what's that? Uh, July high here, okay, at 97.57. And uh, then the top of uh, recent consolidation, the low from 10.20 is 97.66. All right. Uh, I still think we could get there. Maybe we get there in NFPs tomorrow, which would then be a fade um, to sell the dollar on a good on a good number or a good reaction, I should say. So uh, that area really is, you know, where I'm looking at as far as turning, you know, bearish uh, for a short on the dollar and a long in the euro, which, you know, really is the same chart flipped upside down. And we'll look at that in a bit. First, though, gold. Uh, this was the same chart from last night. Again, scrolling out, you can see how the market came off pretty Pretty good uh, from the resistance, just above 1300. And again, 1300, you got the high from May and then the low from September, September 1st, in fact. And um, this is just a simple case of former, you know, uh, resistance providing support, providing resistance again, right? And so with that, um, Kind of looking this morning, we got to 1285 uh, and change. The channel line is literally like a dollar and a half below it. Um, we might revisit that again, okay? Just again with the whole uh, you know NFP thing coming up. Uh, sometimes you go back and revisit levels, um, you know that you traded into the day prior before the market takes off. So. Gold's been a pretty confusing market for me uh, after this substantial breakdown. We had the, uh, we were looking at, or I was looking at potentially seeing 
you know, gold uh, flagging here and then maybe spilling lower yet again before you got the bigger move up. OK, but if that spill was indeed something of a bear trap, which obviously at this point it would have to be classified as. Then what you're looking at here um, <clears throat> is really, uh, you know, looking for the test of the former corrective channel. OK, before you go higher. And that in itself is actually a solid setup. Uh, it's the one that we're looking at on the euro at the moment. Um, but you know, gold, dollar, Swiss, euro, dollar—they all kind of have that same that same setup, right? So, like here would be the dollar Swiss one, for example, right? looking for you have the former channel which would basically be your corrective channel and you're looking for that level to come in play as um, you know as resistance in this case a dollar Swiss euro dollar same thing this is the same this is the chart from last night uh, at least the you know that I'm drawing here but again looking for that to come in as support okay? Um, again, it's, you know, if we move forward in time, uh, say into the NFP hour tomorrow, it might just be that you nick the lows down here before heading higher. Um, this, you know, this is one of the, my favorite setups really, and we haven't really had hardly any chances to do them this year. We had, there were a few Aussie dollar ones. The reason you haven't had hardly any chances is because there hasn't really been any, um, there's really been any or hardly any impulsive price action, right? If you remember, we had one back here all the way back. You had one all the way back here with Aussie dollar, okay, right back in March. Um, other than that, there really hasn't been a whole lot as far as these types of setups. Euro dollar last year, there was a really good one that we had. Uh, I believe it was. I believe it was this one actually in May. I don't know, wasn't that that one? Oh, it was this one. It was the one off the right, the secondary low off the low. Um, but again, it's just it's the former it's what you call the corrective channel, you see, and then the former resistance here ends up becoming support. This one actually did it a couple times. And sometimes you can get the, the next high by doing this. Uh, just extending another parallel. So long story short here, um, that's what we're looking at as far as Euro is concerned, and there's just some good examples of it right now as far as gold, dollar, Swiss, and Euro dollar are concerned. Dollar's taking a bit of a hit right now, uh, ever since I started the webinar. Uh, S&Ps have come off a little bit, gold's come off, or gold's rallied, so last couple hours. I still think that you can get another dip in Euro down into the I don't know about 1040 at this point, but the 10, you know, maybe on just a, ni a, a nick under the low uh, here from today. You know, if you look at the daily, what the daily candle is going to look like if you were to close like this, it's actually for euro. You know, period of consolidation it would be a doji right here. All right. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, the, things, the things that I was going to talk about. Um, so with Euro in particular, I'm looking at, here's that setup. This is last night's chart. Again, still want to buy it on this line, right? Um, so that might be just, if it happens, might be just down near the low. I think that Euro is probably going to complete this impulse, this rally that we're seeing here, okay? Probably get completed up near the trend line. Um, 
you know, put up the daily chart. Here's the Euro daily. Put up the Euro daily chart. And obviously you got the 1120s here, the former lows. Okay. Um, but the 200 day average is 1178 today. Uh, and then of course the trend line is just above there. Tomorrow it would be about 1184. Uh, and then the 618 of the decline actually from August is 1169. So, you know, if you recall, you did have a 61.8 retracement basically here, um, 13.46 of the prior decline into the August high. So I would watch that level uh, as far as, a you know, a top is concerned, basically 100, well, not quite 100 pips. Um, so, yeah, would like to be long into there, you know, at 11, you know, 69, called 11.70, 11.85 is you know the target for a long and at that point you might actually turn over um now how far are we going to turn over well we can revisit the 2000 2002 analog period which if you look at the weekly basis still following it pretty well um, you know the low is the right week this says that you know even if we have made a massive massive low uh, that you could have a period where you know you, you pull back for one to two weeks okay so we're getting into that period right now um, you know and if you've been around the markets for a while you should know that a lot of moves do tend to capitulate on NFP, uh, it's not uncommon. And in this case, we've been, you know, trending higher in Euro, uh, you know, at least the immediate move, right? You could say at the intermediate move, there hasn't been any, right? We've been sideways for so long, um, but the immediate move is higher. And a lot of times you do get at least a short-term capitulation, I guess, short-term is gonna depend on what, uh, you know, what you, what your time frame for trading is, but um, you know, one to two weeks, you could certainly pull back uh, after an NFP, you know, uh, capitulation to the upside. So that's what I'm looking at as far as Euro is concerned. What about the other analogs? Remember the other analogs we had? The 2011 and 2000, the inverse of 2004. So if we look at those, these are the shapes of them, right? Remember we had, should probably make it a different color considering that'd be pretty confusing. Um, okay, so red is actually the, see, red is actually the 2004 inverse period. Um, magenta is the uh, 2011 period. So we have been following this one really well the two th into the into the lows of course ended up reversing again after the uh, Comey thing off the year open it was a good level to look at we were looking for a pop higher although you know I did not think you'd get all the way back to 1120 um, but we did pop higher now we're back into resistance again 1175 probably the first place you'd want to be bearish uh, until then you know you're kind of probably fighting the you know the waters here but you still have this is still you know this is still a possibility right i mean the overlap here kind of eliminates the impulsive nature of weakness um but both of these do suggest that the next couple days you're in a turn window area anyway and the analog obviously from 2000 2002 suggests that you're in a kind of a turn window type of area as well okay so regardless of whether or not the euro has made one hell of a low and the dollar has made one massive huge top right that question we just don't know but whether if it has or has not you know if it has then um great you know and we'll look 
hopefully we can figure that out on the next decline. But even if it, you know, um, even if it has, you, you should you should see a, a good pullback from 1175 or so. Uh, you know, again, the, the 200 day average Fibonacci and trend line. OK, so there's like a lot of things that are in agreement here as far as, you know, coming into a near term high of sorts for the euro. <clears throat> all right. So there's that. Obviously, this is all somewhat complicated on a shorter term basis by next Tuesday, which is, of course, is the election day here in the U.S. And, you know, um, think back to Brexit. I mean, I. You know, I don't think that a lot. I think what happened with Brexit probably was, um, you know, woke a lot of people up um, as far as the, ty the kinds of shocks that can happen with these political situations. It's not like it hadn't happened before as far as shocks, but never to that extent. I mean, we had a move right in the, in the British pound um, that had never been before seen ever. In, in the currency markets as far as, you know, the uh, how how far and how fast it went. So, look, I don't – you know, you never expect something like that to happen. That's why they're black swans, right? If it was expected, it wouldn't happen. Um, but it might be best to not carry any positions into next week. Uh, so, you know, we'll see, um, you know, how, how the tomorrow plays out. You know, hopefully we can get triggered on the, on the long euro position and, you know, take it up to the 1175 area. Um, but, you know, after that, it might be best to kind of be flat. Uh, markets will be there after the election, but there's a possibility that if you're trading the election that your money won't be. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right, moving on. We've spent a lot of time on the euro here and the dollar, but, you know, things are pretty clear right now at the moment. On the, on the really short term stuff, right? Not with, uh, not, you know, considering the election stuff. So just wanted to make that known. All right, let's move to British pound. All right, so we got a rip today. Um, the tweet this morning, we're up at the channel, went, poked above it on uh, the BOE stuff and actually ended up. Uh, not quite getting to 125, but we did get into – what's up, Canwell? How you doing? We did get into the post-crash recovery high of 24.76, right? So right here, and we have pulled off a bit, um, more or less holding the you know um, high volume level from this morning of 24.36. You know, 24.17 is the little spike low we just had here. You know, in line with um, – this is the first 20-day high you've had in, in pound for a while. But I want to show you a few charts. First of all, as far as um, – as far as pound's concern – pound is concerned, excuse me. Do you remember the crash analog that we had? This was published just after the crash in October. Um, we had three of them. One was the inverse of dollar yen. One was, or sorry, the inverse of dollar rand, right? Remember the January crash. One was Kiwi dollar from the August 2015 flash crash. And one was dollar yen from Brexit. I've gotten rid of dollar yen from Brexit because it's really not, that one's kind of, doesn't really it's not applying okay it's just not working out um, but we do have the dollar rand inverse and the kiwi dollar flash crash uh, still left and they've worked out fairly well right um, you know it, the you know pound sideways and has broken out and you're at a point now in both analogs where it actually suggests that you could have a pausing point in this move and given the um, you know move back into basically the crash close okay and then the post crash high and then the trend line right 
one to two days of downside would not be all that surprising here. Um, that said, might be worth buying the pullback. Okay, so if we look at pretty much the breakout level that you have here, you have a very, you know, a pretty clean horizontal range um, for British pounds. Okay, and that post crash range is basically 120.90 to 123.30. Okay. 1618 of that extension is 124.81 right here. The next level is 25.75. All right. You've paused here at the first one. Again, also the post crash high. Um, still holding above basically the, you know, former trend line back here. Um, but the median line, as you can see, which was resistance on the way up, uh, is where I would look to buy this at this point, right? Or look to get bullish on it, I should say, down near 2360 uh, or so, 2350, 2360, um, is where I think you might want to take a, take a stab at, um, at British pounds on the long side. Okay. Uh, again, this is a situation as far as, um, you know, as far as pounds concerned that it's not, it's, you know, it's a, there's a lot of unknowns right now. I mean, it seems like every other day there's something that comes out about Brexit, this Brexit, that, that the market didn't know or wasn't thinking about. And, uh, you know, that makes uh, doing, you know, swing trading a little difficult, but the levels are playing out fairly well. I mean, we had this bullish fork lined up. You can see the fork's been playing out as far as the median line and even the upper parallel being very close to today's peak. So a little bit of consolidation pullback here would not be a surprise. And the first level to look for support on this is the median line because again, it was resistance, uh, you know, before you broke out today. All right. So that's where you're looking at as far as, um, as far as pound dollars concerned. Now, Bigger picture pound dollar, like a day, even a daily or a weekly chart, but pound dollar. Cable might want to try to get back to um, the 1993 2001 uh, trend line. Okay, that red line, well, it was support here on July, um, you know, 8th, the week of July 8th, I should say, which was again, two weeks after Brexit. Okay, once that went, the market, come, that is when we went to that crash. Um, so, being such a well-defined level and being a level that once it was, you know, broken, the market really went, you know, down the tubes, um, that would be a level that I would look at as far as providing resistance. Okay, so you can look at it this way on the short term charts. You've got the range high here at 2330. That area combined with the median line is kind of your sweet spot for support, in my opinion. Uh, on the way up, this is your big resistance. So essentially, since the crash, your big resistance is up here. It would also coincide with your 13-week average, which is getting pretty close to that level. And again, the 13-week average in really strong trending markets does tend to be, um, you know, a, an indicator that provides pretty good resistance and support. Okay. So that's the long-term cable analysis. Next trading move for me would be to look to buy weakness. Uh, again, into 2330 to the median line, which might be closer to 2350, 2360. All right. Okay, so pound is looking decent on the charts. Uh, dollar yen. Okay, so a few things on dollar yen. Let's work our way um, from bigger picture down to the short term. All right, so big picture. If you checked out the uh, and can while I see your I see your um, your question, I will definitely get to crude and silver. 
I'm going to go over some of the currencies here first, and then we'll, we'll take a look, my friend. Um, had talked about dollar yen and the Elliott channel that we had, right? Okay. So in Elliott, if um, some of you probably will be familiar with this, but in Elliott, when you have a proposed wave one, a two, a three, right? The working assumption here, you know, I was, I was talked about it for a bit, is that the, everything since Brexit, which is right here, is a triangle. Okay, so that would be A, B, C. This current decline is D. That's why we got the measurement of 10059, right? We talked about 10059 the other day uh, in one of the swing updates. And as you can see, 10059 is where you'd have wait, proposed wave uh, D equal to 61.8% um, of proposed wave B, right? On the way up, we talked about the AC relationship at 104.82, which, as you can see, was right there. Right? We did go slightly higher, of course. We went to the horizontal level, which was the May low, okay, right here, almost to the tick, actually. So I was talking about Elliott channeling, wasn't I? Yes. So Elliott channeling. Okay. So you take the proposed wave one three line connected to the top of proposed wave two and it will identify or estimate the end of wave four and we got that uh last week and i did talk about wrote that on the long term page um right here let's see there all right, long-term charts. So you can see it here. Throw that in there for you. Go to this long-term page. You click on dollar again. You can see that uh, channel. The same one is just in red, right? Anyway, um, the implication here, you know, it, from a number of things suggests that dollar yen is headed probably about 250 pips lower before you could get a decent bounce right uh, like a bounce that lasts longer than a couple days um so that's what i'm looking at with dollar yen you know over the medium term here now when we look at the timing of it as far as trying to time it you know, maybe even to the hour. Um, we have the chart from last night. This one, All right? So we had this. Let's see, Get to that. All right. So remember, we had this chart from last night, right? Compare A, B, C down. A, B, C, okay, so you get the bounce, you get the bounce, and then you continue lower, continue lower. Um, so we did go, I was thinking we might actually try to bounce immediately yesterday after the close of the U.S. session. Um, did get a little puke, if you want to call it that, into the Asian session. Uh, we did get a reversal, and we've come back, and dollar yen is down about 28 pips on the day. Um, but, you know, holding up, I guess, relatively well, considering downside momentum here. Um, and again, you know, the dollar index talked about the uh, resistance in that. If you, you know, you still get up here, right, for a nice bounce. You know, let's even look at, we can go, let's go real short term, right? One, two, three, four, five, a little, little A, little B. Little rally in a C wave really would set things up for a big for the next dollar decline. Okay, we'll do some real time here. If we were to actually have just bottomed 15 minutes ago, 
or 30 minutes ago, and we can move higher in the C wave, you're going to get 97.60, which is right in the middle of this zone. Okay. That would be just perfect, wouldn't it? Dollar yen is really the same thing. If I look at dollar yen on this chart here, one, two, three, four, five, look, A, B, C. See if we can get a A, B, C. So, you know, the way this sets up is probably for an NFP. If we do hold up into NFP, you get the final NFP exhaustion on the upside. And then the market just tanks. Okay. That's my uh, plan heading into this tomorrow. Right. Now, you might say, why don't you just buy dollar yen here? If you think that it can follow that path, right? Well, again, you could, but really my bias is towards, you know, 100 spot 59, right? We're looking at all of this as a triangle, right? With the market heading back down here to the triangle support area, okay? Um, if you're going to do that, you know, be real nimble and real short term with it, that's fine. But as far as the swings concerned, it is lower and you want to be selling a rally here, at least until you get down into 10059 or, you know, more or less towards the bottom of the range. OK. If um, you go straight from here to 10059 in a matter of days, then, yeah, you might have the chance to play downside capitulation. Right. But the setup is I look at this as basically the same thing as the setup in gold and the setup in the S&P. They all are really quite similar. You know, um, here's the S&P setup. Every time you get back into this median line area, that's resistance. OK, we had the low last night at twenty eighty nine. It's actually something over there. What is that? What is that? That's the low from 7.7. So I'm looking for us to hold up into 2108, maybe a retest of the breakdown level. Yes, that would be perfect. Retest of the breakdown level, and then the market can go on its merry way to lower levels, do whatever it's going to do. Okay. Um, that's, you know, the S&P chart, which, again, same thing really as the dollar chart looking for that move into resistance, just like we're looking for the S&P move into resistance, just like we're looking for the gold move down into support. Although, you know, you missed it by a dollar this morning, um, but could revisit it. So they're really all the same thing. They're all the same trade right now, right? Everything is kind of moving. Uh, you know, it really is the fear, the fear trade. You know, people throw that around all the time, the risk on risk off stuff. And a lot of times it's not true. In this case, um, it is true because the dollar, you know, is moving very, you know, inversely to gold, you know, uh, and, and with and, and with stocks. Right. A lot of times that's that's not the case, uh, but it is the case right now. So you do have a legitimate risk on risk off fear trade. OK, so moving on. Um, what about Aussie? <clears throat> One of these days, Aussie's going to break out and it's going to go up to 86. You know, I think maybe hopefully potentially we're I don't know, you know, uh, getting close to that actually happening. The uh, Aust Australian dollar is continues to follow this slope. We had RBA earlier in the week and we were looking at these supports. Of course, Aussie went higher rather than coming into support, but it's still holding up here very well. Um, taking a look at, you know, just to remind you, how tight 
and how many times you've tested. The blue line is a 52-week closing high, okay, and it's 77.19. So it's like 40 pips higher. It's pretty close. Um, and that many tests, I mean, it's this can't hold forever, all right? Uh, you know, the timing of it obviously has been difficult. I'm living proof of that. Um, if anyone said this was easy, they're lying to you. But the analog that we've been following going all the way back to 2000 can give you some sort of a idea on when the best period is going to happen. So based on this, and again, it's not perfect, but it's been okay, you know, as far as, um, you know, giving you, you know, times to expect really big behavior changes. Um, you know, the September low was good, obviously, and so was the August high. But this still say, it says higher, right, until basically through November, okay? But does it mean you're going to go straight higher in November? No, not necessarily. I mean, there's plenty of room for wiggles still, okay, sideways, up, down. And then it basically says that the market's going to still be crap into January, and then you're really going to take off on the upside. So it coincides with the with the new year, which, as we know, you know, a lot of times the, the, the calendar turns over. A lot of times you do see a really big um, a really big change in behavior uh, once you turn over the calendar, right? You can get a really big move. I mean, I can think of a couple really big examples of that just, you know, since my career started. But go back to Euro 2004. Euro 2004, okay, you went to 2005 and Euro just plunged, okay? Uh, really the, the whole dollar complex really just rallied big time. Um, obviously last year you came in and there was the massive liquidations that started with the whole China thing. All right. So perhaps we get into, into next year in 2017, maybe that's the year of, you know, really big time commodity out performance, right? Certainly possible. And this is something to keep an eye on, uh, as we head into, you know, 2017, which believe it or not, is really not that far away. So the market's coiled like no other here. The upside potential for Aussie is massive. It's so significant. It's huge. It could really, really, really go. Um, and don't forget the Brexit playbook. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, if you remember Brexit, go back to a chart just a price chart. If you remember Brexit, this was Brexit right here, okay? Aussie was in an uptrend. Aussie got smashed, dollar went berserk. Well, guess what? That was, the. we still haven't traded to that level, right? We wrote about it at the time saying it might be the best time ever to buy, end up actually buying uh, things like Aussie and China and whatever, right? It's deception. Markets are decept deceptive. They want you to look one way uh, when, you know, you should be looking at something else. Well, in this case, let's say we get the election comes out, and I don't know what's going to happen, okay? But let's say that, you know, you get this big move. Uh, let's say that Aussie dips on the election. Okay, let's say you get a big washout lower, even spike down into below the parallel, but you come back above it, right? That would tell you, I mean, get bulled up on this thing, right? Um, so Aussie, big time upside potential. And just don't forget the Brexit playbook, um, you know, as far as the whole deception thing is concerned. Uh when you're looking at Aussie too, copper. So here's a copper chart. 
we've been bullish copper all year. It hasn't gone anywhere, kind of like Aussie. I mean, Aussie has really been sideways, right? Well, copper's trying to really break out to the upside. We basically have the biggest base here that I've seen in this thing in, in a long time, all right? Even to get up into resistance, bigger resistance, you could get up to 245. So we've been waiting for this mark, this market to move, and waiting for this move to happen for a long time. It just hasn't happened. Um, but typically, when that does happen, you get all this consolidation. It goes longer and longer and longer and longer. The ensuing move that results is even is even better, right? It's even more powerful. Uh, and you know, it, is the copper Aussie relationship? Is it always like perfect? Of course not, but the big moves will happen at the same time, right? And here's the you know, you get the huge trend line here, too. Okay, this is going back 13 years. All right, this is no joke, this is a serious, serious trend line here. Um, It's the massive place to really take off on the upside. So here's the copper chart. Let's overlay it with Aussie. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So the big moves happen. So looking at this copper chart, it looks really bullish, right? For potential massive upside move a massive base that's forming just like the Australian dollar. It's just very, very, very bullish. The potential is there, I should say, for this to be just absolutely out of this world bullish. Can't really stress that enough. Um, <clears throat> so there's Aussie. Kiwi will be next on our list. Kiwi, not uh, too sure as far as the uh, really big picture is concerned because we ended up turning down from a pretty big area, but it's hard to argue that you don't have an uptrend here. Um, you know, it's this is the 2016 uptrend. It's been very well defined, obviously. And you've actually traded into weekly reversal resistance right now. That's the close. If you look at a weekly chart, you can see it by just um, looking at the close of the high week, okay, which is 73.20. Also, that's the high from July, 73.24. So you are into a level that could provide some resistance. Uh, I wouldn't want to sell it here necessarily, you know, because – Markets again, they have a tendency to go to the, you know, the real big um, obvious levels, and in this case, it's probably the high from September 22nd, which is 73.68. All right, and then you can see that. Excuse me, get the hiccups. 73.68 is also the median line of this entire channel. Okay, and that level itself was also support on the way up back in late summer in August. Um, so 73.68 might be a level to pay attention to as far as a you know a, a pausing point, I guess. But um, really, if you're in an uptrend, you're in a short-term uptrend now. So if you get a dip, look to buy support probably at this parallel. Okay. This is your 25% line of the channel, right? It's the midpoint between the lower parallel and the median line, so it's 25%. And that was support back here on the way up in July. Um, and then it would actually intersect, you know, over the next couple of days with the 55-day average, which is the average that you have here. Uh, and that average itself has been really useful. 
I mean, it was support back here. It's not, you know, tick to the tick or anything, but it's still pretty good, you know, as far as being, um, you know, something to pay attention to. Support here, it was resistance even back in October 20th. So, you know, I'd be looking at that area, you know, 7230s, um, you know, for Kiwi. So it gives you, you know, 7230 area for support, 7368 is a maybe a near term exhaustion spot. There's the dollar. Okay, so moving on then with Kiwi. Uh dollar CAD, I mean I'm really you know, it's kinda hasn't done anything in a while. Um and which means it's probably getting ready for something crazy on the upside. Uh you know, crude oil obviously is is has done plenty. Here, I mean, you've got as we know, we have the big breakdown here, and crude's just falling off a cliff. All right, um, I mean, it's <laughs> just straight down. You've gone from fifty-two bucks to $44 uh, in like a week. In fact, I was I'm sitting here, I didn't realize, I guess ever since I started the webinar, crude has um, continued to tank. So we're, gonna, we're looking at crude right here, Campbell. Um, look, you were asking a lot about crude last time, and I talked about, uh, or you know, basically worried that we were up at really big resistance, and also talked about the, um, you know, the seasonality components here, okay, for crude oil. Um, and what I mean by that, go look at the seasonality page. Crude oil seasonality is really bearish um, into the end of the year. Okay. I mean, it's on every time frame it's bearish. So, not so sure about, uh, you know, uh, being really bullish crude oil here, which it seems like you want to be really bullish crude oil. Um, if I look at the chart, the price chart, however, okay, so this is the same sweat up, same sweat up, can't even talk, same setup as uh, what we talked about with all the other big markets like dollar and uh, gold and euro and Swiss franc and um, that's the channel, okay? So if you get a rebound back to the red line, which is your former channel support, it actually was support here for eight hours on uh, last Friday. Um, I actually do think that you can get back into that region, right? I mean, we are down at 4440 uh, right now. Horizontal level that could come into play is probably the same one that's been in play for almost two years now. So let's look at this. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so the first level is 4356. 4356 is a horizontal level. Obviously, I don't have anything on a slope basis there. I mean, the only thing you could possibly really have on a slope basis 
would be this, which is a modified shift, which actually comes in at 43.56, doesn't it? Totally, wait, this might be good. So if we connect these highs, the parallel from that, it's going to be just about the same thing. Okay, so 43.56 um, can wall is the area that I would look to um, to play for you know for a bounce. Let's do let's do this too. So 4356 would be a bounce area, but then the red line is resistance. So let's say we get into for argument's sake, let's say that we get into 4356 sooner than sooner than later. Your bounce area to then sell into might actually be the high that you just had at 4588. All right. Um, you know, all I can do is lay out these levels for you. Okay. This level though is really clean as far as 4356 is concerned. If you just look across the chart, you can see that you've had some really big, uh, turns there. I mean, in fact, it was resistance last November right here. Okay. Um, and then of course the low back in, in January of 2015. Okay, so I would I would write those levels down really. You know, 4356 looks like a good spot as far as uh, potentially getting a, you know, a probably a much needed bounce after this. But what I want to also show you is the um Okay, so here's, this is a crude oil futures chart, so it might look a little different um, because of the rollover, but the magenta bars here basically are showing you the month of November, okay? And if you look at it in this way, this might kind of highlight just how poorly uh, crude oil performs, Um in the you know in the month of November all right so you've got this is last November I mean you topped on the third day of the month and then basically continued lower all month without much of a bounce at all okay you can see that obviously 2015 was you know uh, or 14 excuse me that was a terrible month uh, a terrible year for crude um, 2013, you know, still bearish, nothing crazy. The last time you had a bullish month in crude was actually in 2011. Okay. Crude seasonality is bearish, and as you can see, it's down more times uh, than it's up. So be careful as far as trying to pick a low in this. But if there's going to be some support that comes in, about as good a place for it to happen is 43.56. This is the futures chart. Again, this is different because um, you have uh, the rollover to the contracts and everything. It's kind of gets all screwed up. So it's not really what you want to draw trend lines on. Anyway, that's that's crude oil. So with that knowledge in the back pocket um, in crude oil, you know, my guess is that dollar cat is going to break through this to the upside. OK, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Um, you know, crude is getting just absolutely hammered. And you haven't seen, and even when it's rallied, you haven't seen much of a response in the Canadian dollar. So, you know, the Canadian dollar is kind of sitting up here. Uh, I still think that if you were to get a pullback in uh, the Canadian dollar, that you would have good support 
at 133, which is just the median line. And we've talked about the uh, ZRT trade or the zoom and retest trade before, but that's, you know, this is what it is. You rally through the median line, come back and test it, okay, and then continue higher. I mean, it kind of happened here back on 1021 rally, pull back, reversal actually, but then continue higher. Um, you know, so I'd be looking for something like that to happen uh, with crude oil here or with dollar cad here, right? If crude oil can stabilize even just a little bit, maybe you do get a pullback in dollar cad before it goes higher. I don't know. That's just the only thing I'm really following on dollar cad at the moment. It's sitting at this resistance area. I know a lot of people that are really bearish dollar cad and I wanted to be bearish coming into this level, but it just won't, uh, it just won't, it just won't, you know, do anything. So, you know, the uh, opposite, I guess, might end up playing out in which it actually goes higher. Especially pay attention if you do get a dip down to 133 and change and, you know, you get a bunch of I told you so's on Twitter, right? Everyone telling you that they knew this was going to happen and then now dollar cat's going to 119. Um, so that's dollar cat. Other markets, we had a question on silver. So we'll look at silver here. Uh, let's take a look at silver, silver, silver. Well, the market actually ended up fine. We talked about this last, I guess, last week. Uh, the market and did end up finding support on the uh, slope that I didn't think was going to hold for gold or silver and obviously ended up being quite wrong with that um, because it did hold. And, uh, you know, as we know, the dollar has fallen apart since then. But your level to watch for silver Daily reversal, draw that bar on the close. 17.52 would be your big time support for silver in the event that you, you know, get down to that area. Now, short term, shorter term, Let's do the same thing that we did have done with gold in these other markets, right? Let's see if we can draw a, uh, a channel in here. You can see that you probably, you've already really come into the silver one. The trading levels that I would pay attention to on this chart, though, support 1752, okay, and then resistance, the median line, all right, um, You, especially because the market has kind of reacted at that area before. Um, so here's that. And then up here, you can draw maybe... Maybe up near 19 bucks, okay? 1910, 1920 is going to be your area for resistance and silver, okay? Uh, support 1752. Silver can be quite volatile, as we know, um, more volatile than gold. So it's not a stretch that you can see these levels get hit. I think you have two equal legs down here, don't you? You do. Two equal legs down in silver, 1736. So buying it into support is not a terrible idea, uh, with support being 1752. <clears throat> uh, 
and this is a silver stock that's been absolutely crazy something that I've been following for a long time this is on log scale um, silver core metals and I think that I have yeah here it is so here's a here's a chart of it on uh, a weekly chart of it you can see it's gone from under about 40 oops 40 cents to uh, 360 uh, anyway if we are in a big bull market with silver and the metals, this one might continue to just rocket to the upside. All right. There actually was, I did want to look real quickly at pound yen. Um, because we've looked at that recently and it, it lines up, you know, kind of with the views that we have on dollar yen, right? That it's going down in a triangle down to 10059 or so but you could get a spike back up into 104 uh, before that happens um, and the views that we have on the British pound and that you know I think pound could go back and test resistance a little higher but would also be um, you know looking for you know, resi big resistance up at the long, long-term level. Uh, but, you know, again, that's um, the time frame on that's difficult. But this chart, pound yen, I would pay, I would pay close attention to, okay, if we, if I go, if I, if we go like this, here, let's do this real quick. Let's scroll out. Scroll out on this chart. Okay, so this was the trend line, essentially the old trend channel. Um, you remember Brexit, okay? The trend line held up until the crash, the second crash of Brexit Part Two, I guess we can call it, uh, in uh, in the pound. Uh, again, we've got that 13-week average up there, okay? So the underside of that trend line, I'm looking at it as being a resistance area. As you can see, excuse me, it's up near about 130, 130. Okay, so if we were to look at pound yen as being some sort of complex three up, three down, and going up for another, you know, rally, you'd have two equal legs at 130.69, which is actually really close to the month open from last month, um, and it's not far below the this is 13130 you can see this is the uh, this is the trend line okay back from the 2011 lows so this is still you know a big possibility uh, that you end up trading up into 13070 to you know 13130 or so as part of a fourth wave of an ending diagonal right one two three four and then you go down to a new low five. Okay, so I think that's a distinct possibility um, for pound yen. And then you would have a bottom which, you know, could end up sending you in one huge giant reversal. I mean, an absolutely astounding reversal. You know, so let's, uh, you know, count along here. One, two, unless this is a truncation, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? You can see this is a, a five. This would be a five if you got a little more rally and then another drop. Um, that's how this might play out. OK, short term, I haven't really looked at pound yen since 
the trail uh, was hit on the stop here. Um, the break-even stop was hit obviously earlier this week at around 120, well, it was 127.45. But you know what? That area might actually could end up being um, could end up being support again down here. You know where you closed last week, right? 127.50 overnight resistance, 127.35 or so. I'd be more interested right now with the way that uh, the markets are trading. I'd be more, or I am more interested in trading the, these things separately. So trading dollar yen separately to pound dollar. So, you know, having a position on in both rather than just trading pound yen. If pound yen were get up to 130.70 to 130.130, then it might be worth trading both of these, uh, you know, or trading the cross, the non-dollar cross. And finally, Euro Aussie, um, because I just talked about how Euro Aussie is potentially this like really, or sorry, how Aussie dollars is potentially like really bullish uh, breakout thing, you know, in Euro Aussie, however, reversed really sharp last week. So, you know, one of them has got to be wrong. And that's probably true. They probably both aren't right. You're probably not going to have Aussie dollar and Euro Aussie both go higher. Um, so, which one is it? Well, it's pretty simple for me. Euro Aussie. That's Euro CAD. That's Euro Aussie. This is the short term Euro Aussie chart. So, Euro Aussie, I'm willing to look higher in this pretty much as long as you're, you know, you're finding support. Uh, on this trend line that was broken, right? The trend line that was broken, um, the September trend line, the September uh, October trend line, which was resistance at the very end of the month, and we just came down very close to it, but didn't quite hit it. And then, of course, you have the new bullish structure. So I am willing to trade Euro Aussie to the upside as long as you're kind of responding on these levels. Um, and then the long term chart, which, you know, showed last night. We have the reversal. Uh, and, you know, the. On the, the long-term fork the fork that you're looking at here you just go these highs and lows okay and for your trend line you know perhaps you get back to that area 148 149 over the next you know four to six weeks and if that happens um, you know then maybe that even gives a clue that it's really time to get pulled up on the Aussie dollar because Euro Aussie would be at resistance at that point. So just a thought uh, on, you know, maybe combining the two, uh, you know, to get a better indication of Aussie. But the potential in Aussie on the upside is really significant. We've had so many false breaks that, um, you know, the, the big move will be really, really quite powerful. Um, so, you know, just keep it in mind, don't get married to either side, obviously. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm going to wrap it up uh, with a little longer than usual, but uh, I had a lot to cover. So thank you so much, everybody, for attending, and have a great uh, rest of your week. NFPs are tomorrow. Remember, we got the good setups as far as Euro is concerned, going up in 11.75 or so. Uh, if you pull back here, you know, support might be right under today's lows near 10.50. At this point, uh, dollar yen like it lower into one double O, you know, 60 on the triangle thing. But again, would be looking to sell a spike up into, you know, uh, 104 plus uh, if we got it. Uh, it was looking like we were going to get a pretty good react or continued dollar pullback here today. But ever since I started the webinar, the dollar's gone straight uh, down. So, um, you know, we'll see what NFP brings. Okay. All right. So everyone have a super rest of your Thursday, super Thursday. And uh, Jamie Setley here signing off. Yeah. Take care. Bye.